Right, in just a few months, it'll be two years since President Akufuado promised to make Accra the cleanest city in Africa. Although a lot has been done to address the challenge, it's still difficult to accurately assess the impact of efforts made so far. But today, we want to turn the spotlight on ourselves. What can you do as an individual to help realize this dream of living in the cleanest city in Africa? Today, we're having a conversation about what each of our roles should be in this. We'll even turn up the heat on ourselves, the media. So if you're a Christian, this is what they call reveal to redeem. Now let's start with some reports on sanitation from key parts of the country. First, this one from Jojo Kobana. Now he's titled it, My Accra. Check it out. Oh, I'm so excited. Welcome to the very beautiful city of Accra. This is the city of my birth. I believe you are disappointed and may be unhappy with me for showing this, but this is also a crowd and people live here. And the people who live here are Ghanaians. This is certainly what it is. I won't go back. My name is Ernest Edu. I am 37 years old. I've lived here for about 30 years. Uh, formerly, this place wasn't uh, uh, like this. Formerly, we, uh, we, we were not 20 here. But as the, uh, the population kept on going, the whole, thing, the whole area be became uh, congested. So now, the people uh, living around, they have been throwing uh, rubbish inside the water. When they are putting it inside the water and uh, you, tell, you, you tell them that they, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't put it inside the water, they will tell you that, are you the one to clean it? If you are, uh, want to fight him, then he will go and call plenty people to come and support him. Then they, they will be uh, insulting you. In Ghana, it's like, uh, they will tell you, oh, yes, it's like your mother, uh, uh, Hey, it's like, go and look for what you can do. River Densu, very nasty. Jojo Kobner's My Accra. Sadly, it's all of our Accra. Uh, we'll get to hear from Jojo himself in a short while, but first, uh, let me tell you about who our other guests are going to be. Uh, you'll be meeting Benjamin Latte. He's a spokesperson of the civil societies and community groups in water and sanitation hygiene. They call themselves WASH. Uh, Ernest Morgan will be here with us. Ernest Morgan Aqua uh, is the general manager for the greater Accra region of Zoom Lion. And uh, on social media, we'll be talking to you. We've asked you, what can you do in your own small way to help deal with the sanitation challenges that we're having in Ghana? Uh, we'll be sharing your responses uh, when we get to that point. But before all of that, here's another situation with sanitation, but this time from the garden city, Kumasi. Here's what Prince Apia has put together. Though waste management authorities have placed dustbins at vantage point to reduce refuse menace, some traders and customers still litter around. Anytime I buy food, I could keep the waste on me until I come across a dustbin. Like my colleague said, it is how we were brought up. Even when you tell others not to dump refuse anyhow, they will begin to ask whether you are the government. I think there is the need for more education. Known as the garden city of the country, one will expect the impact of the name reflects in a people. But that isn't the case. Maybe, just maybe, the people themselves have refused to live up to the name. Be more, no one can say, no, 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 no
I think some people are ignorant and some don't have dust beans at their homes, but that shouldn't be an excuse to litter around. We say abroad looks beautiful, we watch them on TV, but do they litter around? Some people will even ignore the dustbin. They will dump refuse anyhow, but others will do the right thing. I think it is all about how we were brought up. Now that we have the dustbins, there is the need for more announcement so that people will get to know the essence of the dustbins. Over the years, government and waste management authorities have implemented measures to curb the sanitary situation in the once beautiful city, but that have failed. Attempts to revamp some of these measures continue not to succeed. Even the sanitation day which many people anticipated could at least change behavioral attitude of Ghanaians have done little to that effect. From Orangi, during Kojobonsu's era to the current chief executive officer of the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly, SBNG, which has so far placed that means at vantage point, there is still so much to be desired. Today on Joy News Agenda, we are asking why? Why government attempts to solve sanitation challenges has always failed to bring the needed change. Most of the dustbins placed within the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly are currently full to the brim. No attempts have been made to empty them. But the most worrying concerns traders raise are some of their colleagues carry garbage from their respective houses to the central business districts. Some people even carry garbage from their respective homes to dump into the dustbin. When you talk about it, they say you cannot do anything to them. For me, there should be an advert on TV to educate so that the younger ones would learn from it. If the government has realized there's the need to station dustbins at vantage points to be able to manage the waste and someone fails to make good use of it, I think they should be arrested and prosecuted. But why would someone carry refuse to the central business district? A trader, Enchi Isaac, explains. There must be a problem somewhere because why would someone carry garbage from their house to the central business district if we want to put an end to that? The government should first solve that problem. This is Kedjetia Roma Hill session of the assembly. Everyone is busy trading here, but nobody cares about the environment. We are told most of these garbage were deliberately disposed of by the traders. Today, for instance, I am waiting for the garbage collectors to inform them so that they can help us. I came here earlier in the morning and had a confrontation with someone. Isaac Kusi, who is in charge of taxi cabs here, says they are doing their possible best to reduce the menace. Because I will check here. We have got a dustbin to keep the place clean. We make sure any driver that drops just a polythene on the ground will be made to pay 200 cities. But the question still remains. Who should be blamed for the menace in the city? Is it a KMA that has placed dustbins at various places or traders who deliberately litter around? <laughs> We should enact laws so that those laws will deal with the people. We should get enough toilet facilities in town too. These were things we had in the past. Mahmoud Mohamed Nudin's reports for Joy News.
Right, well, that's uh, the situation in Kumasi. Clearly, there's enough to go around. Uh, everybody has a role to play to make a city clean. Now, let me welcome my guests into the studio. Let's say good afternoon to Benjamin Arthur. He's a consultant uh, at Water and Sanitation Hygiene. Uh, they call themselves WASH. Uh, Ernest Morgan Aqua is the general manager for the Accra, well, I think this is the Greater Accra region of Zoom Line. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you both for making the time to be here. Good to be here. Right, okay, Accra is filthy. Let's just be clear about it. Accra is uh, enormously filthy, but the president wants to turn it into the cleanest city in Africa. Dreams are good, but what are the practical steps we need to take? I want to start with you, um, Mr. Morgan Aqua. Now, your boss, uh, yeah. Dr. Joseph Sian Japon, has been tweeting quite furiously about what he believes the plan should be to make Accra clean. He talks about bins and wanting to donate uh, about a million bins or something yeah. like that. Tell us a bit more about his vision of how we are going to make this happen. Okay. Thank you very much, um, and greetings to all your viewers. The president mentioned in his last State of the Nations address that he wants Accra to be the cleanest city. And for us, we say that it is attainable, we can do it. But for us to do this, it stands on three main people. Let me say the government has its role to play mm. in ensuring that the city is clean. Then the stakeholders, the private partners, they also have their role to play then the individuals also have a role to play. The moment one person refused to play its role, it would affect all of us. So as the president has made his pronouncement and he has instituted um, a ministry specially in charge of sanitation, it's the right step. They are there to formulate policies to guide us as to the waste issues that we have. We have the private companies. In Accra alone, we have about um, 16 waste management companies, mm. um, of which um, Zoom Lion is part. Our role is also to make sure that we collect the waste from households, from institutions, and from the commercial centers, then transport it to the final disposal site. Then we, we, we can talk about the individuals. And I, from where I sit, I see that now the challenge is on the individuals. They have to manage the waste from where they are before the contractors come in and pick it to the final disposal site. Right. When we look at the quantum of waste that we pick from individual houses and institutions to the landfill site, I can tell you that we are on top because even the amount that we projected to be collecting to the landfill site is way above it's above the projection mm. meaning we are collecting enough to the final disposal site but anytime it rains or when you pass around you see garbage around i would ask the same question what is the cause that is why our executive chairman came out recently to say that we've tried so many models and now the way to go is for each and every household to get a bin. That is the first step in waste management, to get a receptacle to hold the waste. Mm. When we have each and every household or institutions, if they have their bins to hold the waste, you will not see it around. Mm. The joy is not for people to litter around so that in the morning, another company will come and pick it. Okay. The joy is when you walk along the street, the shoulders of the street, you don't see anything. But now you realize that when you see the garbage, you see them. At the end of the day, it has picked. Tomorrow, mm. it comes back. That is what we want to fight now. Right. So when each and every household gets a bin, then they place their waste in the bin. That's the first step. Then the contractors will come in, come and pick it. Then it would end up at their final disposal site. OK. So um, from your point of view as a private organization that is, um, you know, uh, part of the uh, waste disposal or the waste management uh, uh, food chain, if you will, mm -hmm. you think at the moment the onus is on the individuals? Yes. Okay. I deliberately came to you first because I wanted to check with um, um, our other guest whether or not he agrees 
that at this moment, the state, contractors and suppliers like you, have done everything you have to, so that all that is left to have a clean city is for people to also do their part. Do you agree? I don't agree. I beg to differ. Yes, you mentioned the three pillars, the state, the private, and the individual, the household. But I don't think the, it, it's, 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 it's the processes that is set in motion that makes all this uh, uh, work. And they are looking at, we are looking at the generation which you and I do. We generate the waste. Then it is collected, stored, and the rest of the chain continues. Yes, the president has that vision to make Accra, make Ghana clean, which all of us agree and which of us, all of us support. That is the government, that is the president's vision. After that, what happened? That's a policy statement that he made. After that, what happened? What were the concrete action plans? This man will do this, that man will do this, this man will do this. These are the indicators, the milestones that will guide us in seeing. So after that statement was made, what has happened? And in that frame of reference, what was the role expected of the private sector? What was the role expected of the individual household and other institutions, the media? Statement was made, and up to now, mm. you don't have any bankable action plans from which you can make reference as to these are the things that we are doing. The private sector has been there. The household has been there. Yes, the private sector, they are doing their best. Because they are trying within the circumstances they find themselves. I'm saying so because if you ask my colleague here, issue of financing is very critical. If he's being frank with us, he can tell them when the last time they received payment from the services that they are rendering. Why don't you tell us when was the last time you received payment uh, for the services you're rendering? Um, I don't have the record idea. But you can give us an idea. Is it months ago, weeks ago, years ago? Which is it? Um, hitherto, it was months ago, but the president has now committed and they've started paying. We've okay. seen some green lights over the past few weeks. Have you seen some money? Yes. You've seen money? They yes. paid some? Yes. Okay. Over the past few weeks. So, so it means that until the president stepped in, the backlog, and I saw the backlog to be cleared, so then you ask them, how are they financing all these activities? How are they paying the people? So if all these things are not there, the president can make the statement, the private sector can come in, volunteer 1,000, 1 million, 2 million uh, uh, beans, it will not work. Then the individual angle, we generate. And therefore, the onus is on us too make sure whatever is done is done within the frame mm. that will make the city clean. That is where we tend to check our responsibility. For the fact that somebody think somebody Zoom lion or somebody somewhere is paid to do the work. And therefore, I mean, after generating, I don't care what happens. Mm. But is that the case? I mean, is it that people don't care what happens? The, uh, it's not that people don't care. Mm -hmm. At times, the infrastructure to support people to do the right thing, to change the behavior, is not there. Yes, you can educate people, don't do A, don't do B, don't C. After they have generated, and they are willing to go that step and put it in the, where is the receptacle? Well, so one, yeah, mil if one I, million bins are coming from Zoom Lions. Surely see, that will solve that problem, won't it? Where is that being going? Is it going to the houses, public institutions, public places? Where are they going to be placed? And you and I know, bins get full. It get full over a period. It takes time for it to be moved. Mm. Then you go around and you see the whole place mess up. The individual, it's not 
for the fact that the individual doesn't uh, want to throw mm. the waste around, but the fact that the bin is full and doesn't want to take the waste back home, then he or she is compelled to dump it anywhere. But let's also um, ask the critical question, even though perhaps uh, you might feel that the individual is not entirely to blame, this, uh, government and the private practitioners have provided bins in public places before. What happened to them? They got stolen. Mm -hmm. They got vandalized. They got removed. And this was done by us. That, that, yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. And I always say in this country, our problems are too. Indiscipline, in common sense. <laughs> I mean, everything boils down to these two basic issues. Mm -hmm. Why would you go and remove? And we have developed that attitude that if we see the person removing, vandalizing, we don't want to talk, we don't want to say about it. We just look on for people to do that. We don't demand accountability from people. Either we are fear all, this is not for me, it is for the government. And that attitude, I think, we have to look at. There is a critical element which comes from the government side. That is the law enforcement component. Mm -hmm. And that is where we also feel ourselves. Now, you said something interesting at the beginning. You said that um, following the announcement, if you like, the policy statement that the president made about us being the cleanest city in Accra by the time he leaves office, following that, what you wanted to see was some concrete steps. Yes. You know, what do we do first? What do we do next? What do we do after that? Now, I want us to try and interrogate that. Both, I'd love to hear from both of you. What should step one be? Should it be us getting individuals to do the right thing, as in, you know, use the bins wherever you go, including your home? Or should it be some move by government, perhaps um, to provide bins or to um, increase the, the scope of work that they give to the um, private, uh, you know, um, waste management organizations or perhaps scrutinize them better or pay them quicker or what should be step one? We'll I'd love to hear from both okay. of you. Um, step one, in my opinion, will be getting the right attitude from the individual. Okay. Now this right As attitude is what? Use your bins. Use your bins. Indiscriminate dispo uh, disposal should be seized. Uh -huh. Yes. As so that one is going on, mm -hmm. it goes concurrently with the president putting up the right institutions. Mm -hmm. We need and more institutions? Is that yes. what you're saying? What, what, what the, institutions do we need? The institution, as in, my, my um, brother talked about the policies, mm -hmm. and there are so many things around waste management that mm -hmm. we've closed our eyes on. Mm -hmm. Take even... Um, the the gone are those days that we have these sanitation officers, the mm -hmm. tankers, people that they come to your house, they inspect whether the drains are clean, whether you are all these things are enshrined in the local government bullet. So you think government should do that? Yes. Provide uh, tankers. Yes, they are there. We mm -hmm. have tankers people there. Yeah. They but now they need to be strengthened mm -hmm. so that. They, they establish sanitation courts, mm -hmm. but um, in my view, they are few. Mm -hmm. They can be more. So that, you know, in our uh, Ghanaian system, sometimes we need punitive actions. We need to take people on. And we have to take it outside the political frames, okay. outside the begging. Because sometimes you go and this person has done A, B, C, D. You want to, the person should be taken on. But you have a call. It's mm -hmm. this person's brother, sister. Right. And all those things are affecting mm -hmm. the... So permit me to ask you this. Uh, how many complaints do you get in a day about bins being full and not being collected at the right time by Zoomline? It is minimal now. Minimal. One Define minimal. The, uh, minimal as in... In about five, six months ago, mm. we had issues with the final disposal site. Okay. And in our Ghanaian system, we are, what we do more is a dumping at the final disposal yes. site. 
So when we have issues there, mm. even when you pick from the individual houses, mm -hmm. you don't have anywhere to dump. Okay. Have in, you solved those problems? Um, it's solved in a way, but we are sitting on a time bomb mm -hmm. because boom, landfill sites that we, um, I think 70% of our waste in Accra mm -hmm. goes to Pong. The place is 98% full now. Right, which means you still have difficulty disposing of the waste. So you are, there are instances where you are unable to collect the bins at the time you should. That, those, the five months that I was talking about, we mm -hmm. had issues with, you see, it rained and mm -hmm. the place was messy. So the, mm -hmm. uh, the trucks were unable to assess mm -hmm. that site mm -hmm. quickly. We, we they worked on it mm -hmm. and they were also facing some financial problems mm -hmm. and i think it was handled so, so now it is okay so if every uh, resident every individual does the right thing and fills their bins yeah. you, you first of all that place will get full even quicker than you, you it is filling right now yeah there and there, then what happens there are other um provisions to create more but in creating more landfill sites, Zoom Lion, as a company, we've instituted the Accra compost plant that we are doing recycling mm. um, of compost. We are doing the compost. We have some in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. We need to. We are bringing about four mobile recycling plants so that we reduce the waste that ends up in the final disposal. How, how um, efficient is that when people don't separate waste at source? So that is the next thing. You know, uh, hitherto people have been talking about um, waste separation, segregation of waste. Mm -hmm. But it can be properly done when, at the end, we have avenues to solve the waste that has been separated. Because when you separate it in your household and one mm -hmm. truck comes and picks all the separated waste, you have not done nothing. Mm -hmm. That is why we are doing the plastic recycling, we are doing the composting, and we are doing the plastic recycling, we have one that is working mm. now. So the bins that we are distributing, we are manufacturing the bins ourselves out of the plastics that we pick. Mm. Right. Okay. So uh, we're, we're able now to connect with Jojo Kobina, whose report we saw earlier. Uh, he's an assisting editor here with Joy News. He's a member of the Media Coalition Against Open Defecation. Uh, and he has reported extensively on sanitation issues. It would be good to get his perspective as well. And I, uh, like I said, we're turning the spotlight on ourselves today. So uh, Jojo, if you can hear me, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Yeah, good afternoon, Jojo. Right. Now, uh, Jojo, Accra, you know, <laughs> is filthy. We're trying to figure out what step one should be. Now that we know we have a dream, we want to be the cleanest city in Africa, what should step one be? You've been around. You've seen the size of the problem. What's your perspective? Well, I think the first thing that we should do is attitude now change. You know, when you look at the Ghana um, uh, politi uh, uh, national policy on sanitation, if you carefully look at it, we have devoted a lot of time for community participation where people are supposed to change, where communities are supposed to be involved in sanitation issue. But the reality is that it, that hasn't happened. We don't have, we have so many people detached from it, and that is a very big problem. I have analyzed the Rwandan um, national policy on sanitation and it is just one line on community participation and you can feel that the people the people love uh, a clean environments they they join every saturday to clean up once a month to clean up people are so much connected to sanitation and that is one very big thing you know when i was reporting uh, on sanitation in cape coast for example I put the camera on the people who were easing themselves at the beach. They did not care. They, 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 ha they found nothing wrong with it until they were so much embarrassed before they changed. And I mean, they came back later and said, you know, we have been embarrassed. The whole world has seen us defecating, and so we want to change. So I feel that what we should do, we need to work on the people. The people must understand why they should keep their environment clean. In Tashi, I did a similar story. Where the people are saying, well, this is where I defecate, this is where I throw rubbish. I put the rubbish in the, in, the, in the drain. And I mean, they're part of it. I mean, for someone to just look at you and tell you that, well, I put rubbish here, I mean, it's a real shame. But you can feel that the people just don't care about the environment. So the very first step should be 
people understanding why they should keep their environment clean. And then right. we look at other issues like uh, 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 providing providing them the the, the, the right receptacles, uh, the right containers for, for disposal. And then we take it from there. Then the next step should be making sure that you punish them. People should be punished. If you look at our, uh, uh, the, the, the sanitation policy, it talks about polluter pays and then uh, sanctions should be applied. If you mm -hmm. look at the Rwandan uh, um, policy, it also talks about sanctions being applied. But the reality is that in Ghana, we don't feel that people are punished for dumping, for polluting, and that is the problem. Right. Now, Jojo, we, we want to also turn the spotlight on ourselves, the media. You, of course, have worked extensively in sanitation reporting, but is the media as a whole in Ghana doing everything they can with this, uh, this attitudinal change? Have we done enough to push it well, along? Well, I think we can do more. I can't say we have done enough. Uh, we should so do more. So where have we, we should... fallen short? Um, we, I think where we have fallen short is um, educating the people, like educate, going back, you know, because all we do is to shame them, to go and say that hey, you don't have to do this, and so we shame, we shame them. But mm. I feel that we should, we should do more of the sanitation. People should know that because I do A, B, C, D, that's the reason why I'm getting the cholera, that's the mm. reason why I'm getting the diarrhea, that's why I'm getting all these diseases. And then people will feel that, because it, it, will, it will shock you that you, go, you, you are aware of the fact that when you don't keep your environment, this is what happens to you. But the people, the normal people, they just don't care. Where you would see um, someone eating close to feces at Choco, then you'd, you, you, you'd be asking yourself, what is really going through the mind of this person? But it is a normal thing. It is so normal for them. They go and fish. Someone is eating themselves. They, they drag the nets over it. And then uh, feces picks uh, or, or will, be, or will be on the fish. And then they wash it. They don't really care. I mean, these are the realities. So people need to know how important sanitation is. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing that I think the media has not done so uh, uh, very well. And one very big failure of the media should be turning the spotlight on district assemblies. They are supposed to be enforcing sanitation laws. Because we have very beautiful sanitation laws, and they should bite. Mm -hmm. But we, we always stick, uh, we, don't, we don't put enough pressure on them. And so district assemblies are having a field day. They, they sit there, say, I mean, having very fun, uh, fanciful titles, uh, sanitation engineer on their doors, and they do nothing. And so we need to put a spotlight on them. We need to make sure that they work. Right. Uh, now, stay with us. I want to come into the studio for a moment and, uh, and uh, come to you, Mr. Arthur. The debate of uh, cleanup exercises. Uh, I know that uh, Jojo has suggested that in, in Rwanda, they're very successful. Once a month, everybody comes together, cleans up. But it occurs to me that if I put my rubbish in a bin, as I'm supposed to, if while I'm out, I don't litter, nobody should come and wake me up on a Saturday morning that I should go out and clean someone else's mess. Definitely. So. The debate rages on. At the same time, there are those who also say, look, if we don't come together and clean the thing and show some pride in our community, it'll never get clean. I wonder where you stand on, on, on this debate. It is when you get to the urban environment, then you have this problem. In our rural communities, you have communal labor day. Whether you threw out there or somewhere, like every week, people are pulled together mm -hmm. to do the work. And we can adopt whether your environment you do the right thing or because the issue is especially when it comes to uh, uh, liquid waste. I mean, toilet and those things. There are fly standing on excuse me the shade coming to your house. It doesn't know boundary. It doesn't know boundary. So whether in your house you are doing the right thing or not, we should still come out. We and should clean. still come out. But and don't clean. we pay taxes for somebody to do that? so that that fly will have nowhere to land. That is the point. It's someone's work. How do we facilitate that person's work? Why should we facilitate that person's work? We do, he doesn't facilitate our facilitation, any of their salary. Our facilitation should come from demanding accountability. Not going out to do their job for them. Yes, demanding accountability. You were asking for what should be the steps. Mm -hmm. I would have 
after the president's statement, the ministry should have called all the stakeholders. Let's sit down and look at the rules. What do we do first? What do we do? Nothing of that sort has mm -hmm. happened. Two, as he said, implementation of sanitation is at the doorsteps of the district assembly. Who among us go to the district assembly and ask them, what are you doing in my area? I'm trying to keep my area clean. What do you want to do or what do you do to complement uh, uh, our effort? None of us demand for this accountability. And this country, I only say demand for accountability is only two areas, from political party members and from the top. Because the DCE, DC, uh, MCE is afraid that he or she will be fired if the president say and does not respond. Mm. So the community, you and I, can go there and make noise. The DC will not respond because it doesn't affect his or her position. Shouldn't anybody also demand accountability from the people, the individuals? Yes, and that is where the laws come in. Let's go and clean our environment. You are not ready to go. We have all the laws. The Public Health Act is there. All the, some criminal laws that we can use. No, but, but, but you but, see, but, wait, wait, you see, wait. Because you are now saying two things. First, you say that we should demand accountability from those who we are paying yes. to clean up, who are failing to do it. Yes, we should demand accountability from them. But at the same time, you are saying that there should be a law that criminalizes my refusal to go and clean when the person I paid. Did they do his This job. comes to those who offend the law. You and I might be doing the right thing, but the person next door mm. might be doing the bad thing, which is affecting us. Okay, How so do it's we... not, you're not saying uh, if I don't go and clean up, you should penalize yes. me? Yes. Okay. All right. That's also one thing we don't do. Our next door neighbor is creating all this nuisance for fear or rep of reprisal and those things mm. we are free two and one thing yes we're talking of garbage and those things noise like this we are afraid to tell you are making noise and those things mm. you are polluting i mean we see and there is interesting phenomenon in the country now in the urban areas squatter mm. where you have well demarcated areas squatters are springing up those people where do they defecate where do they mm. so you go and tell the district assembly these are the people in my area this is what they are doing the this assembly within my going to tell them that your next door came to report you mm. to us. Right. And these are the challenges that you and I who are trying to do what we must do mm. face in the in the those environment. Then I see that oh, if these people are going and tell them to stop what they are doing, the next day uh, I have a reprisal and therefore I'm mm. not willing to meet you on go and clean again. Right. right. You, you, um, of course, um, you call, Ernest, you call for attitude, no change as step one. Um, does that include cleanup exercises? Should we all be um, uh, forced to come out and clean up our environment? Um, cleanup exercises are good, but in resolving our sanitation issues, that is not the primary thing to do. Because the notion that people are getting now is, I would mess up. First Saturday in the month, they will come and collect. Mm -hmm. So do we keep it till first Saturday? If the whole place is clean, and as we have in our rural areas, then we want to do a communal labor, that one fine. But now the cleanup exercise, and when we start, you remember this cleanup exercise, way from Nkrumah's time, it comes and it goes, it comes, and any time we start, the enthusiasm is very high, mm -hmm. but it goes down. Now we do cleanup exercises. You realize that it is either an NGO and Zoom Lion or an NGO. It is always for, let me say, the contractors. Right. Now individuals, but when we started, if you, you recall, all organizations were coming and so I asked myself, the cleanup, is it the way to go? It is mm -hmm. not bad. But to solve the current issues that we have, that cannot help us to solve it. Right. Okay. Now, um, let's see if we can still connect to Jojo. Uh, now, Jojo, this, this, this debate, I, I'd love to hear your take on it as well. But um, uh, also, if you, can, if you can address the issue of how the authorities respond to the reportage that the media does 
on sanitation. How much of it results in impactful change, policy change, and some action that leads to an improvement in the situation? Um, I, would, I would say that we need to clean up. The reason why we need to clean up is because, first of all, when you go to, I, I would use the Rwandan example. I saw a young boy hold um, an old man accountable, an older man accountable, when he dropped something on the, on the floor. And that was because he forms part of the cleaning team. So, you know, we, we need people feeling part of it. If we have, uh, let's say, we, we have organizations cleaning, it's okay. Zoom Lion and other private people cleaning, it's fine. But when the people form part of it, it is good. And I feel that we need to clean because we need to go back to the basics because we have shown that we cannot, we, uh, leaving it in the hands of private people, paying them is not working. So we also need to get our hands dirty. Mm -hmm. Now, the second question is um, how impactful. Now, I'll tell you a story on the Cape Coast Castle um, uh, defecation, open defecation behind. When the story was aired, the tourism minister was upset. She held a press conference and said, you guys are disgracing the country. We're trying to brand this country so that we see more tourists coming. And you are embarrassing us. You're disgracing us. You're doing A, B, C, D. And then she came up with a very elaborate plan. They're going to fence off the place. They're going to build more toilets for the people. A very elaborate plan. Three months, uh, six months after nothing happened. So I had to go back to the place, do another story to remind her before they formed a tax force. So currently, if you go behind the Cape Coast Castle, people have stopped defecating. And, and that is the joy of doing uh, the impact that, uh, 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 only one impact that I can say that uh, my sanitation report has achieved. Mm. The, re the remaining, uh, um, Accra Metropolitan Assembly would say, oh, we are going to do something about it. Nothing, not, nothing happens. Accra uh, mayor told us that people have stopped, uh, what do you call it? Pan latrine system has stopped where people are carrying, are carrying uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, um, excuse me, say shit on their head to go and uh, dispose of. He promised that, oh, we are going to close all of those down. My last checks, many of them are still, uh, uh, people are still carrying it. And in this current, current scanner, people are still carrying excreta on their heads to dispose of to earn a living. And this is something that goes to the core of human rights. But we have authorities, and they are not working. And so it has been mixed. Sometimes you get the impact. Sometimes you get empty promises, and nothing ever happens. Hmm. So I guess, again, we have this loop of accountability that is simply not being closed. Um, and and we're, all, we're all getting away with things that we shouldn't be getting away with. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the state is simply not taking any new action. They claim they want the city to be the cleans, but nothing new is happening. They're not engaging anyone. Individuals are just not doing what they're supposed to. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the contractors are also not meeting the expectations that we're, we're, we have set for them. Because still, even in our current situation, uh, in spite of the fact that you say you're doing everything, there are clearly those who are not getting the service that they should be getting See, from you. I'm, I'm not cutting you, but one other aspect is in waste management, the individual also has to pay for the service rendered. We have so many individuals who think that it's the government who has to pay. So sometimes you go around, you give the door-to-door -door waste collection, at the end of the month, collecting your money becomes a problem. Wait, I don't, I don't get this. You're, you're saying that you're providing a service to customers yeah. who don't know they should pay for it? Yes. Why some, are you providing they, the service? We, some know. They know that they have to provide. But let me cite an example. In Abosokai, mm -hmm. we're having a 360 waste collection for them. Our work was just to collect the waste, go and dump it. But because of the way the places, you know, the Abosokai, the way they, they are, like yeah. how they are, the work that people come in as early as six, they go home as late as eight. So what we decided to do was, we will collect the waste for you. We would come in, sweep for you. We would sell to the gutters. We would even do fumigation. Right. Looking at your population, they gave us a number of 15,000 shops. Said, okay, looking at the population, let each and every 
um, shop, pay 10 Ghana cities at the end of the month, not a day, 10 Ghana cities at the end of the month, so that we do the service for you. They resisted. Why? Because they were like, we are paying property rates. We are paying um, um, revenue for A, B, C, D. So we cannot pay for this. The government has to come and pay. So at the point in time, we had to withdraw. But that's different. That's different it is from not you different. saying that you provide a service to people who know they should pay, and at the end of the it month, is not different. they refuse to pay. It is not different because they knew when we started. It was an arrangement that we sat with the executives. They knew that at the end of the month, they were supposed to pay. So they agreed? But they agreed. I thought you said they resisted. They, they resisted when the time came for us to go around oh, to right. pick the money. But they agreed in advance? In advance. That they would pay? And yes. then when it was time to pay, they pay. said, we won't pay? So for over four, um, six, seven, eight months, people mm. were not paying. And okay. when it happens like that, it becomes difficult for the contractor to continue the service. So when you pass there, you know that contractor A, B, C, D is working here. But there are pockets of waste around then you you would just draw the conclusion that they are not doing their service but they also have a challenge on the field mm. so now individuals have to know that for the services that they are uh, the waste contractors render to them they have to pay wow it's interesting uh, the concept of them even thinking they have a choice of not paying for yes. a service so, that's so, so being provided that those who gave them the contract what was their role how did they come in to facilitate so that the about so kind of people will understand that they have to pay. Because you can't give the person the contract and sit somewhere without even supervising mm -hmm. the work he or she is doing. Yeah. So who, that who do you have recourse to if a contract if these contracts are breached? Who who signed the contract? It was between MWAS, that's Metropolitan Waste Service, mm -hmm. um, the Kai executives and mm -hmm. AMA. Right. Okay. So the Abosilkai executives are the yes. ones who are, whose names are on the dotted line. Yes. So I'll be taking them to court. We, we, we have not. Why not? Because when you look at the local government bulletin on sanitation, when somebody is not paying, it doesn't give rights for you to take the person to court. What but, recourse does but it give? In the bulletin, it is in it that um, when you don't subscribe to any waste collection, the AMA or the sanitation wing of AMA mm. can summon you to court. And the way for them to do is for them to check if you have a receipt. So we were expecting the AMA wing to go around the shops. If you don't have a receipt, then it means you have not subscribed. Then it means you are the cause of the littering around. Mm -hmm. But we had so many challenges there. Mm. That is the issue of the law enforcement, enforcement. aspect in the, in, the, in, the, in the education. You see, we, we've done it so much so that we have removed ourselves that it is someone's work. Someone's responsibility. And therefore, that one, fine, we are paying for these services and those things. But in our small corner where we do create this waste, we have to make sure uh, uh, we deal with it. Mm. I mean, why is it that? You see, the, the general view that we are dirty and people wake up clean their rooms. Mm -hmm. If we are dirty, they will not let their houses waste. They will not clean. They clean their homes and bring the waste outside. outside. It means there's an element there we can build on to create awareness. Yeah, the waste being the one aspect we, 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 we are looking at we are losing is the decentralization of the system and making people part. If National Sanitation Day, the ministry and the minister has to go around every region and every, what role does the district assembly play? Because if the minister doesn't, and if you watch around during that time, if the caravan moves from region A to region B, Activities in Region A stops. stops. <laughs> but District Assembly is empowered enough to lead the process. You don't need the minister to be going around to celebrate Waste Day or National Sanitation Day, people galvanizing, mobilizing people to go out there and do. The District Assembly has the power 
to do some of these things. Hmm. It is the district. And you see, in our communities, we have the urban council, the unit committee. It is because all these structures are not working. So where the district assemblies are failing is in the supervision, right? In the to supervision. Sure okay, I mean, now, you were saying, how, how, many, how many times have they even hmm. gone? Check them, Zoom Lion. You're supposed to do ABCD. You have not done. That's what I'd wanted to ask about. You know, it, it appears that um, contractors like Zoom Lion, well, they have the district assemblies captive because the money that is supposed to pay you uh, is, d is deducted at source. So the district assembly has nothing to hold over your head to make sure you do the job right. They can't tell you if you don't do it, we won't pay you because you've been paid even before they receive their money. No, no. It doesn't work like that. We have weekly and monthly report that we sign. And it is being signed by the MMDAs. So the sanitation section has a portion to sign on each and every assignment that we do in their locality. Then it goes up to either the coordinator or the MCE. So we don't do, it's, it's not um, we, we are not working in isolation. Wait, so you're telling me that the money is not deducted at source from their... That's not what I'm saying. Uh -huh. So it is deducted at source? Yes. And you are paid before the district even gets the money. So what do they have to hold over your head if you don't do your job? They sign reports. Reports to what? You've been paid already. So what's the report going to do? Are you afraid of a report when you've already taken your money? The, the, the no, other no. side is, yeah. who do they sign the contract with? Who is the principal in the contract? Is it the MMDAs or the ministry? Because if you sign the contract with the ministry, and there are no benchmark indicators based on which the MMDAs will monitor and supervise the work. I mean, so this is the report you have brought. I don't even know where you're supposed to start. Mm. So. I can go around, oh, you said you have to do A, B, C, D. I've seen you've done something to have signed. But initially, what was the indicators, the thing? So these are the issues that has to be Did you agree ad benchmarks addressed. with government on your performance? Are there performance standards to which you're supposed yes. to be working? Yes. And, and have you ever been penalized for not meeting a performance standard? Oh, mm. yes. Really? What was the uh, punishment? What, what happened to you? What did they do? You want me to mention that one of here? Of course, yes. We want proof that our yeah. government is properly supervising the contract they have with you. Oh, they are. They so are. What, what did they do when you failed um, to meet the benchmark? It is not across. It is area specific. So give me one example of one area where you were penalized for not meeting a, a, a benchmark or a standard. The, 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 some of the... Um, payments that they do, it is not across. It is out of the work done. So there were times that we did not receive from A, B, C because there were some few issues. So wait, tell me, what again did they do to you? Uh, I, I didn't get it from what you said. What did government do to you? The, the payments that mm -hmm. you are talking about. Mm -hmm. It is not that we go and it's a cut, done deal. Mm -hmm. So they withheld payments from yes. you? For not meeting yeah. standards. Yeah. Y you can give me one example of this. I don't have that fact yet. Um, you wouldn't have to do it now, but you, you can, so that I can assure our audience, you can give me evidence, yes. documentary evidence of this government or some, uh, the government of Ghana, whether this one or previous, mm -hmm. docking you pay for not meeting a standard. Yes. You will give me evidence of that. Yes. All right. Okay. That's the promise that Zoom Line will make to you. <laughs> and we will follow through and make sure that we, uh, we, we bring you that evidence. Now, Jojo, let's ra wrap up quickly with you uh, before we go. Look, is it possible, is it realistic to say that Accra, the, what you describe as my Accra, will one day be the cleanest city in Africa? Um, I hope so. No, I, no, no. Is it I possible? Hope, but, uh, hope is not a strategy. Is it possible? For now, what I see, how we are doing our things, I, I don't think it is possible. Um, people are not changing. Um, politicians are promising to, to um, institute some measures. It's not happening. They are promising to um, uh, sanction people. It is not happening. 
And there are so many other things that, that, that makes Accra very, very, very dirty. I don't know whether you have been to the Lavender Hill um, recently. Remember in 2016, November, President, Atami, uh, President Mahama went to um, Lavender Hill and then he commissioned the fecal waste, um, uh, what do you call it? That treatment that, uh, plant, yeah. That plant. And then I remember very well what he said. He said, oh, for all the people who have an excuse that, well, uh, since you guys dumped the fecal waste into the ocean already, so we already take it there, that practice should end because the, this fecal plant is here to end the practice. As I, as I speak, speak, speak with you, um, it is happening. If you go there, they are still dumping some into the ocean. That side of Lavender Hill still is, is still very bad, still very mm. awful. The water is still um, uh, greenish and yellowish, and I mean, with feces in in the water. And so we have a lot of work to do. We keep making promises. We keep saying we're going to do things, and we never get them done. And if you go into the, uh, not even the slums, the slums, go, I mean, the N1. You walk, walk on the N1 highway, and you see you see so many people disposing of their their trash people carry their trash mm. early morning like 5 a.m or 4 a.m and then they just dump them on the highway so though i'm an optimist i i would say that i don't think it is possible because if we want to really change then we have to do all the things that we know because we have documented them we have policies we have things all we need to do is to make sure that it happens and I don't see it happening. Right. Jojo Kobna is our assisting editor here, and he's covered sanitation issues extensively. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for uh, your contributions. Now, just before we wrap up with our guest in the studio, we've been asking you on social media, what can you do in your own small way to help deal with the sanitation challenges that we're having in Ghana? Let's have a look at uh, some of the responses that you've shared with us. Uh, Silabi Adi says, um, by not littering around indiscriminately. Uh, Bokete Ben, ben I, I think that's Bentua, well, interesting name, says, according to NPP and Nanado, uh, during the campaign to 2016 election, I understood Zoom Lion was to do all dirty jobs after I litter my hood, so they should please continue. Wow. Uh, there's, a, there's an attitude that needs uh, fine-tuning. Jeffrey Nduka says, Cities were constructed to wash themselves when it rains. Everything flushes like a water system and keeps the city clean. It's the duty of government. Uh, Jeffrey, I don't know about that. Maybe that's the reason why people are dumping rubbish into, into gutters. Uh, no, uh, this city is not designed to wash itself. Mohammed Rafiq Jibril says, I think we have a big responsibility to raise our kids well and teach them to do the right things as we fight to change ourselves too. I personally think our society is falling apart and we have to wake up now and do something about it. It won't be a bad idea to start buying food in our own bowls so we reduce the use of plastic bags. Okay. Uh, Akonoba Kanga says, invite KNUST lecturers to cane citizens who do not partake in the cleaning. <laughs> All right, uh, Jake. Uh, Nikoba says, uh, every house should have a sanitation minister. <laughs> one house, one sanitation minister. <laughs> hey, who by the V8s? Okay, Junior Winfred uh, K. Selom says, by strengthening the environmental health officers. Uh, Enoch Isse says, by slapping anybody who drops or dumps anything anywhere like that. Well, well. Uh, Yao Afum says, where is the sanitation ministry? Okay. Uh, we'll send you the Ghana Post GPS location for that. Kweku Gideon says, not littering around. Okay. Well, great contributions there. Thank you all ever so much. And a big thank you to uh, our two guests in the studio who have most certainly uh, enlightened us and, uh, and, and shown us uh, what they believe to be their way forward. Thank you both very much uh, and uh, we hope You're to welcome. continue this conversation in the coming days.